Well, hi everyone, and happy Friday, and happy end of the week to you all, and I, I guess happy Halloween, and uh, welcome to That Fallout Show, episode 53, Happy Fashala Nachtween, because wow. it's relevant later, yes. How are you, Shaleen? I, I am, I, I, I exist, I'm okay. I am that I am. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you for being here. Vendor is not here this evening because he's actually doing important COVID-related things. So wish him well, wish him luck, and and all the well wishes and Indeed. merriment. We love you, Vendor. Thank you for fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go ahead and get into tonight's episode. And uh, before we get into the uh, meat and potatoes of it, or should I say the candy corn of it, because it's trying to stay with the Halloween theme. No? How, uh, no. No, it doesn't work? No, it doesn't work. What's the... the candy corn of it. That's, that's no, that doesn't work at all. Uh, maybe like the, I don't know. Um... Before we get into the trick-or-treat bag of the show. Better, better. Yeah. Um, you can help promote this show if, if you want. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is really promotion worthy, but it's our show and we like our little show that could. Anyway, you can share us on your social media. You can send us our uh, send us emails. You can like, subscribe and retweet our things. You could tell your friends about us and host us on Twitch as well. Every bit of promotion, because this is all grassroots, um, every bit of promotion that we get is certainly beneficial and helpful because we love you all the more for it. In tonight's episode, we've got some news, gameplay, a lore segment. Yes, lore. And uh, yes, yes, we have some lore. And uh, uh, email. We have an email. But before we get into all that, Shaleen, we have some five-star review shout-outs, as well as some new Discordians. Take it away. Lovely. Well, we have a couple of five-star reviewers. Um, the first one is Bees519. Got me back on Fallout 76 when I thought I was going to be done. You guys probably sparked more players to play 76. I thank you all. And we also have a five-star review from Enclave Soldier 2077 who says, I didn't realize that this was run by the same people from Redacted. I'm so happy that I found this podcast and anyone who liked Redacted will most definitely love this podcast. <laughs> Thank you both for those five-star reviews. And uh, if you out there in internet land would like to leave us a five-star review on iTunes, we will shout you out as well on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have many, many new lovely people in the Discord. Uh, let's start out with Skull Forker. Yeah, you want to... Yeah. Tread that one carefully. That's, that's, uh, that's always a good place to start. <laughs> uh, also, Guy. Welcome, um, Guy. <laughs> thanks, Guy. Uh, also, M.W. Chi uh, another one you want to be careful oh, with. M.W. <sighs> I was trying okay to pronounce there, that. Uh, I yeah. didn't realize it was so easy as M.W. 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 <laughs> I'm like. Uh, Chi Chi. <laughs> Uh, Luke Josie, nineteen ninety five, the Paps Messiah, full Winchester. You never go half Winchester. <laughs> full Winchester. Or wait, you never go full Winchester. That's yes. right. That's the movie. Uh, That's the yeah. Bouncing bit, and Reens fifteen. So. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining the Discord. And how can they? How can anyone join the Discord? Our Discord is a lovely place, and you should join it. Um, so just just join the platform of Discord, and uh, you can join our server in particular by clicking the link below our Twitch page. If you're watching us live, that's right there down below us. And if you are not watching live, it's there even when we're not live. Alternately, you can send us a message on social media, and we will get you an invitation. All right. Thank you so much for that, Shaleen. Thank you for those of you who joined the new Discord. Now, let us see what's in the news. If you like news, you're going to love our next segment. What happened in the world of Fallout, Shaleen? 
Well, I have no idea because the only thing I've done so far for this podcast is to show up. So we're going to find out together, dear listeners, you and I, we're going to find out together what happened in the world of Fallout. I will help you along. Let's click this little article, Inside the Vault, Camp Shelters, Dev Dive, and Halloween Events. So this is the most recent Inside the Vault article that was released yesterday. And they've released a 13-minute, I believe, video uh, where a couple of developers walk you through the new uh, camp um, underground shelters Ah. situation. I haven't watched the video. Me neither. um, Because I kind of just want to explore the shelters when they're out. You know, I I just I want to wait until they're part of the game and then experience them that way. But if you would like to learn more, you can watch this video. Uh, that can be found on fallout.bethesda.net. Uh, also, you can try it yourself if you have a PC copy of Fallout 76. You can just jump on the public test server and uh, and work on your own underground shelter right now. And the additional news from this Inside the Vault is the Halloween celebration. So as we all know, and, and we have lamented in the past, Mischief Night, last year's Halloween event, is not returning this year. Instead, oh. it is the return of Fashnasht. Um, so <laughs> That's the title of today's show. <laughs> yes, we can, we can all put on our, our lovely masks and march alongside the robots of Helvetia. Um, I forgot. I always call it Helvetica on the show, and, and I, I pronounce it correctly. And I, I feel like I've disappointed someone out there. Um, no. So yeah, you can you can march alongside the lovely robots uh, for this weekend, along with double XP and another twenty five percent off purveyor sale. So that's great because I had almost hit my thousand script again from the last purveyor sale, which was last weekend. Really. But yeah, yes. see, but you, here's I was at like 750 script. <laughs> but you don't earn anything. Like you don't get more script from the sale. You just spend more. Yes, but it helps me clear out all of that oh, script. So gotcha. that way I can I can sell my legendary weapons with reckless abandon. Um, but yeah, that double XP is great because it's going to help me uh, keep a level or two ahead of you for another day. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of become a little uh, yes. competition. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. Um, so real quick, uh, our chat is just given the, all the ideas to Bethesda. The, uh, um, Alex said that it should have been made in Oktoberfest instead of Foshnut. And then um, seven... Sullivan Zevin Sacrin says, an Oktoberfest that Biv hosts. And they're so right. Ah, they I mean, that would have been great. But if they can't patch Mischief Night, they're not going to build a whole new event for us, guys. They just, they just like, swap out the, the texture masks. It's just it's just Foshnut, but with beer and different control masks. Control-C, Control-V. Right. Well, <laughs> that's how game development works, right? Yes. Is you just copy yes. one game to another? Control-C, Control-V, and, and you're done. Um, click save. Um, but... <laughs> and post. <laughs> yes, they're they're definitely not going to be building a new event from scratch if they can't even fix Mischief Night for us. But it would have been great to see Biv. Yes, they're yeah. too busy building the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, I hope that's good. I hope I hope the Brotherhood of Steel thing. I have is, faith. It's good. I Wastelanders was good. I was pleased with Wastelanders. Mm. So. Mm. Hopefully, hopefully that will be good as well. So, moving along. <laughs> um, so, the Halloween events, Fashnosh, Double XP, 25% off the purveyor, that all ends on November the 2nd. And the next little bit of news is that the Steel Dawn Brotherhood of Steel artwork is available as a high-resolution wallpaper, um, if you would like that, um, on Bethesda.net. Uh, a lot of people were requesting um, to have that. Is the, is it just me or does that kind of look like a Star Wars esque? It poster? really does look very similar to a Star Wars poster. I, I feel like the background is it has got a, a bit of a Tatooine vibe mm-hmm. for sure. And uh, I just watched yeah. the, I just watched the first episode of Mandalorian, so maybe that's what's on my head. But that, that that girl, that like sergeant girl there, mm-hmm. is. Uh, 
just that kind of made me think like that looks like a Star Wars pose. Yeah, and it does. Like, and this guy Star with Wars. the gun as well. Yeah, Han Solo you know? pose with the. Yeah. Kind so of. like this, this lady plainly she's like a a Jedi, and and this guy with his blaster, he's he's a a debonair smuggler, <laughs> and uh, and the power armor figure, you know, he's he's plainly the uh, the menacing villain, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> um, I'm really curious to see how. Because they really haven't given much away as far as story content uh, of what's coming up with Steel Dawn. And no. so I'm really curious to see. I definitely don't think that they're going to be hostile, which I was wrong about. Because I thought they were going to be hostile. But I don't think they are. It's going to be interesting to see how they interact with the Raiders and the Settlers. Yeah. So. I, uh... I'm looking forward to it. I always enjoy Brotherhood of Steel quest lines, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do hope that the Brotherhood of Steel isn't too benevolent. You know, I, I want them to to have a bit of an air of menace. Um, I've got this feeling they won't be. I have because it's going to be a small foothold in Appalachia. It's not going to be like they're rolling in with mm -hmm. the Pridwin and right, just armaments out right. the wazoo. They're coming in with I would have guessed a small contingent, a small platoon of soldiers. Um, do you think they'll have cars? No, no. Will they have cars? No. I don't think there's been working vehicles except for like maybe twice or once. Fallout 2 had yeah. a car? I think that was the one I was thinking of. But Yeah. I hope, though, I hope that with the potential Steel Dawn success, I really hope that this means we'll see more from like the Enclave or some other faction mm -hmm. or whatnot. Because I really, you know, like... Steel, the Brotherhood of Steel was such a big part of Fallout 4. It would be really cool to have something a little more classic or new. Uh, well, then again, we did have the Institute in Fallout 4, but you know what I'm saying. Indeed. Indeed. I quite agree. Mm -hmm. So that's it for Inside the Vault. It was just a, a brief little update. Our next item is uh, that we are celebrating the 10th birthday of Fallout New Vegas. Uh, we all know and love Fallout New Vegas. Well, we mostly know and love Fallout New Vegas. Some of us don't know it. Some of us don't love it. But that's okay. We love you even though you're wrong. Uh, but Fallout <laughs> New Vegas turned 10 last week. And um, the game's director, Josh Sawyer, did a couple of charity streams to raise money for the California Wildlife Relief Fund in honor of this anniversary. Uh, this is a rock, paper, shotgun article by Imogen Beckhelling. And um, over this, over the weekend, um, Sawyer raised just under $24,000 for the cause. Um, he used the Jay Sawyer mod and um, it was pretty good. It's the Jay so, oh, that's the hard, hard one. Yeah. The, the very hard mode. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. And uh, there's, uh, they've posted a VOD here in this article with uh, a quote at the end that says, man, I forgot how many effing scorpions we put in this thing. <laughs> He's right. There are a lot of scorpions in this game. That's true. And if you want to go back and watch these videos, he did answer some questions from chat about New Vegas' development, oh. about difficulties that they faced making the cutscene with Benny, to bugs that they just couldn't uh, iron out. And he uh, affectionately refers to Obsidian as Bug Sidian um, a couple <laughs> of times in the stream. Nice. So. Yeah, there's some interesting little tidbits about about the game's development. So it's it's sort of like a like a director's commentary um, stream of the game. Um, and he does use the Jay Sawyer mod, um, which uh, we've discussed in the past. It's been a while, so just for uh, a little refresher. In addition to fixing some bugs, it makes the gameplay much harder. It's it's a rebalancing patch as well. <laughs> it lowers your base health. It lowers your carry weight dramatically. Yeah, it, it reduces it, the level cap. It and, rebalances uh, it in the enemy's favor. <laughs> it really does. And additionally, it um, it causes some item tweaks stim packs can can uh, expire and that kind of thing and they're, they're not as effective it's uh it's quite an experience the j sawyer mod and i i definitely recommend checking that out uh if you would like a new way to play new vegas uh this is sort of um 
it, it was the way that he felt the game was perfected in a way. And um, Airy Twitch in chat asks, where is that posted? That is on uh, Sawyer's Twitch page. J.E. Sawyer is the Twitch handle. So twitch.tv slash J.E. Sawyer. And uh, you can check out those VODs there. Uh, he's very open about talking with fans. He's, he's a neat guy. We had him on the show that shall not be named. Really interesting guy. <laughs> I was going to say it was a pleasure talking to him then. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I didn't even realize it was the 10th anniversary of New Vegas. Um, and I stumbled upon this article after picking the lore for tonight, which the lore is focused around New Vegas. So I thought that that was kind of cool. And then like reading the lore and seeing these videos, I was like, man, I kind of want to go back and play that now. You know, it's such a good game. Such a good game. I don't know if I can deal with the crashes anymore. So. Yeah, it's hard to go back. Yep. That's pretty much it for the news. It was a quiet news week. It was. It was. All right. Next up are some ways that you can spend even more money in the wasteland. And we got some ballistic bargains for you this week. And uh, October has been just chock full of wonderful items and tidbits and tad bits from the Adam shop. I've already blown through my daddy Warbucks Adams. And I have no more, uh, which is a bummer because I want that mechanical cat. Oh, mm, right. Robo Kitty is the best. <sighs> so. Available until November 3rd, you can get the spooky ghost player icon, the mummy costume for Fallout First members only. <laughs> uh, smiley jack-o'-lantern and the squares wallpaper for Fallout First members only. Uh, and then the Flatwoods Fletcher compound bow skin is available until further notice. Um, you, there's some new stuff that like you can dress up in. You have one day left to get it before, um, before Halloween. The Spooky Ghoul Bundle for 1,300 atoms, and that includes the Feral Ghoul costume, the Night Terror Gauss Rifle Paint, Spooky Doorbell, the Ghoul Player icon, and the Halloween photo frame. Uh, you can get that for 1,300 atoms. Then you can get the Feral Ghoul costume as a standalone for 700, the Viking costume standalone for 700, the Night Terror Gauss Rifle Paint is 500 atoms, the Spooky Doorbell is 300, the Ghoul Player icon is 150, and the Happy Halloween photo frame is also 150. Uh, Postal Service Backpack is 500, and the No Thank You Emote is 250 atoms. Those are all available until November 17th. It just occurred to me. So uh, those of you watching the video version can see uh, that Jim Justice is back here wearing the Viking costume. I need to pair this hat with the Chally outfit. <laughs> the horned that, Viking helm is with that the creepy with the your outfit. Up? Yeah, it's like it just so hit great. you. And you're like, oh. so great. Nice. Uh, it would be cool. Actually. <laughs> uh, uh, the Free State's Junkyard Power Armor Paint is 1,200 atoms available until November 10th. Headed for the vault are the OG Halloween decorations that were up earlier this month that I wasted all my money on already. The Halloween uh, Robber Bundle is 1,300 atoms. The Halloween Camp Bundle also 1,300 atoms. The Halloween ho decoration. Bundle is 700 atoms. The robber costume, 700, uh, 800 atoms. The jail cell wall kit, 500 atoms. The large and small plasma balls. One's always bigger than the other, anyway. Uh, 500 atoms. Halloween cardboard cutouts and decor set, uh, 250 atoms. Halloween bat lights, 250 atoms. The black cat bundle, 1,300 atoms. The witch cauldron is 500. The coffin stash box is five. I didn't know that was a stash box. Uh, no, the free one's not a stash box. I know. I didn't realize the other one was. Yeah. Well, uh, Spooky Sound Machine is 250. The Skull Candle set of three is 250. Uh, Laughing Witch Player Icon is 150. And the Pumpkin Vault Girl Mask is on sale 10% off at 270 atoms. And the Blue Floater Mobile. 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 Whatever. 250 the Floater atoms. Mobile? <laughs> floater mobile. That's that's how floaters get around in their floater mobile. Um, there's a there's a band that I used to listen to years ago called Five Iron Frenzy, and they were a ska band. And I remember I, I didn't have any of their albums, and I was like, I need to buy one. So I went into a, a CD store and I saw one of their albums in the shelf. I'm like, I'm gonna buy that, and I'm gonna skank all the way home. 
but it was the one album that had like 30 songs on it because half of them were like little outtakes and b-sides and silliness right mm-hmm. i didn't realize that they had one song on there that would be like it had like this really heavy guitar and it just went dun, 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 and then someone went Pooter mobile and it just always struck me funny so whenever it's what kicks in my head <sighs> Something that's only relevant to me. Anyway, Black Rider Power Armor Paint is Fallout first only. That's available until November 3rd for 1,120 atoms. And actually, all these are available until November 3rd. Wait, I need the thing. I need the mood setter. The audio is not... Yeah, that's... Uh, there we go. Da-dum. The Blackbird Power Armor Paint, uh, 1,440 atoms. Uh, is also 20% off. Mask Plague Doctor is 400 atoms. Bone Raider Excavator Power Armor is 500 atoms. That's 50% off, folks. A steal of a deal. Black Shovel Backpack, uh, 250 atoms. The Black Knight Gatling Gun Skin is 250 atoms. The Skull Mask is 150. Mr. Pebbles Plushie is 100 atoms. And Vault Boy Cutout Set is 250 atoms as well. If you've got some extra atoms to spend on a fast jetpack or a slow gin uh fizz huh slow gin fizz yeah slow gin fizz um you can you can drop drop them all in the atom shop there because there's some real cool stuff and i gotta admit that black cat uh bundle is pretty fantastic it's so good the robo kitty i love it it's an animatronic cat and it's it's just it snuggles up it curls up and then you go and you activate it and it hisses at you it's very wonderful um yeah so all right enough of this noise it won't go away there we go all right so that's it for the news we're done with the news we can throw it away it really wasn't a big news week um even though there was actually a lot of stuff happening it just wasn't quite Nears the last weekend, we had the Purveyor Sale a Double Score weekend and a Double XP weekend, and then another Double XP weekend this weekend. Of course, I will not have time to play as much as I want. Uh, Dr. Mulder in the chat, the cat is not a stash box either. And uh, I did some science, you cannot kill the cat. Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the more scarier elements because this is like a halloween weekend it's tomorrow halloween and you know fallout for all in, in, i remember actually let's take a walk back memory lane shall we and think <laughs> <laughs> and think before fallout 3 actually dropped right um i had never heard of the fallout series i don't know if you had fallout 1 or 2 I believe I had heard of it, but I had certainly never played it before Fallout 3. And I remember somebody asked me, in because I worked at Target at the time, uh, in the electronics counter. I was quite the salesman. Um, and someone's like, what is this Fallout game? And I, I didn't know what it was. And I was like, I think it's a survival horror, but first-person shooter. And I had no idea. And uh, little did I know, I was somewhat right. Um, and... The game has horror elements that we've chatted about before where they mix the darkness with the funny humor and you go into Springvale Elementary and there's just little skeletons around from like the kids that are dead and and stuff like that. But then, you know, something wacky happens, but it's not really a survival horror game, right? I mean, I'm not. Right. No, it's, it's an RPG. Yeah. Well, the overlords at Obsidian, if you remember, uh, I guess maybe nine years ago, put out something called New Vegas Dead Money. Remember Dead mm-hmm. Money? I do remember Dead Money. Yeah, and this was quite the scary DLC. Uh, what was your What was your first experience with Dead Money? I found it terrifying, Dead Money. I I did. I found it very spooky, and I also found it very difficult. I believe I went in there on, in hardcore mode, and it was, <laughs> yeah, like there there are not enough beds in the Sierra Madre. There are far far too few beds. Yes, it's really bad. Well, our lore segment is going to be about the DLC and some of the stuff behind it because it was just nice to revisit, and man, it really made me want to go back and play it. But Dead Money takes place around the Sierra Madre Casino. Um, this casino had never opened. It was supposed to be finished before the bombs fell and be this beautiful, grand, extravagant casino. But instead, 
October 23rd rolled around and the bombs fell down and the casino sealed up with all the guests inside. Uh, the other thing that happened was the security holograms came on and then killed all of the guests. Those holograms were so tough. Yep. Yeah, that's why you shot the little projectors. Yeah, you had to find the little projectors. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were terrifying they were. because they there was something more um, merciless about those holograms than, than other enemies. Yeah. Um, and and on top of that, after the casino closed up, it started spewing out this toxic cloud. Now, uh, the toxic cloud was discovered before the construction of the casino was actually finished, and some workers got sick. And so some hazmat suits were developed at Big Mountain and shipped to the Sierra Madre for the workers to put on. Uh, the suits didn't work the best. Um, there were issues with them um, and some other whatnots. Yes, Shaleen? So these ghost people in their in their hazmat suits. Yes. I'm just thinking of this now that you're you're bringing it up. I feel like these are the prototype of the mole miner. You I know, feel I, like there are some similarities there. Yeah, I wonder if the hazmat suits from Big Mountain were shipped to the Appalachia because those hazmat suits um, that they had similar issues where. Um, the ghost people were effectively trapped in these hazmat suits in the toxic cloud since it seeped in slowly. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it turned them into these, what they call ghost people. Um, they always had these masks on. The eyes were green and glowy. Yeah. Um, I just, I feel like being in, uh, entombed and transformed in their suits sort of connects them to the mole miners. You know, they... Yeah. I don't yeah. know if... I doubt the lore ties together because of the relationship oh, it, of those two. No, no, it certainly doesn't. <laughs> but I, I could, just I feel like it, it's it's akin. I I definitely see the similarities, like yeah. like the way that they talk too, because the breathing was also rabid and, and gaspy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so here's what's crazy: so the ghost people were trapped in the hazmat suits. They're kind of like ghouls because they don't speak, and they're effectively hu mutated humans. Um, they kind of have a hive mindish thing. Um, where there's like a central, they have a place where they live. Uh, it's said to be underground. You don't actually find it. You don't even know. But they drag their victims back to wherever. Nobody knows, but they take them alive. Um, there are ghost trappers that will lay bear traps. So when you get your leg caught in a bear trap, they come get you mm -hmm. and take you away. They don't use weapons. They only use primitive uh, guns like knives and spears. And they're really tough to kill because they hop around and they jump and they leap everywhere and they're creepy. But here's the thing that I forgot. I forgot they could not be killed with weapons. Mm -hmm. You have to go up and you they either need to be disintegrated or dismembered or eaten by dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I forgot uh, about that. one of the times that it was handy to have a melee build so that you could just hack at the body. And I was always a sniper. So like going in there with like a... Mm -hmm. A melee build was like going in there with a butter knife and trying to hack at him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so they would just get back up and start beating you and getting you. The casino became a, like a rumored city of gold and people tried to find it, but they couldn't. You know, that was the thing about the Sierra Madre. It was untouched because nobody knew where it was except one person found it. And that was Father Elijah, who was a former Brotherhood of Steel scribe, I believe. Um he went out looking for the casino to find new uh, weapons for the Brotherhood of Steel. And he found it. He found the uh, casino, but he knew that he couldn't get in there. So instead of pulling like a, you know, Ocean's Eleven kind of thing, he's like, four is, four is a good number. Ocean's Four is a great number. Not five. I'm not going to be a part of it. So I'm going to get four other people uh, to go in there and, and do this mission for me. So... He put out little broadcast messages that when you walked into the room and you're like, what's this about gold I hear? Yeah. You, you get knocked out and then you wake up. That whole speech begin again. Mm -hmm. Then you effectively wake up in the town with a uh, uh, slave collar around your neck that will blow up if you leave. It's fun times. And uh, you're meant to go find the other members of your team. And if any of them die, you all die. And the other members of your team were Christine. She was a mute uh, raider. I think she was a raider. No, 
thought... she was former Brotherhood of Steel. That's right. That's right. She was um, she was Veronica's lover. Oh, really? I forgot yeah. that. <gasps> yeah, Aww. she was Veronica's lover. I forgot that. Man, I really that those mm-hmm. games are so good. Um, couldn't you eventually get her to talk again? Yes, you could give her the voice of the the lady who who did the begin again speech. That's right. Um, you find dog god, dog god, depending on which personality you feed. I think there was like a choice where you could you could tell him to be someone else. Yeah, you could talk to him, and uh, you could talk to him, and he would switch. Yeah, and one of them, I think, dog would eat the uh, bodies, and mm-hmm. then God didn't want to. Um, he he was more of the sophisticated type. Yeah, God was the intellectual side of his personality, and yeah. Dog was the primal, uh, violent part. It was such a fun little thing to work between the two. Uh, yeah, and then you actually find Dean Domino. Yes, I was so excited when I realized that that was Dean Domino from the posters, because mm-hmm. there's uh, those Dean Domino loading screen posters were there. Uh, from the beginning uh, of Fallout New Vegas, you know, the whole time you play it, one of the most common loading screens is a Dean Domino poster. Yeah, and his posters were on, like, the casinos, too, from performing mm-hmm. back in the day. And actually, I think he had a little bit of a love connection with the uh, Begin Again lady. I can't remember Yeah, her name. who uh, Vera Keys, That's thanks, right. Sullivan Sevens Racing. Ah, there you go. Uh, yeah, and they had a little bit of love thing. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a very fun... Um, it's a very fun DLC, and the idea is that you eventually break into this place through whatever means, and when you finally get to the vault, there's all this gold, you know, like the gold that was in 76, mm-hmm. but you can't take it all. You had to pick, how much am I going to carry? What am I going to take? Um, different choices that you made, you know, your teammates could survive or die, and um, even just in that such a small DLC, there was such an amount of choice that you had to do and you could only run it once. But I remember that town and not so much the casino part, but that town was terrifying, man. Mm-hmm. It was so scary. And like the red mist or was it green or red? I think it was red. It was mist. red. Yeah. And then like the dudes would just jump out of. Yeah. yeah. And Archon's like, there's a trick to carrying it all. I'm sure there is Archon. I'm sure there's a trick. Uh, I think you had to like have a certain build and then I forget if there was a glitch or something. I think you could also, like, pick one up with Z. You could, like, carry it around and then drop it, put it in your inventory to go through a door, then drop it again to pick it up mm-hmm. and run with it or something. Because um, the uh, casino was blowing, blowing up, I think. It was, like, self-destructing or something around Yeah, you. there's you have a limited time to get out. Yeah. Gosh, now... I know that the New Vegas mod for Fallout 4 is never going to get finished. But, boy, I really hope it does... Because I, I really want to play this game again. Actually, scrub it. Um, I want them to remaster it. That would be... Mm-hmm. I know I have kind of a general disdain for remasters. But uh, this would be one that I would look the other way and pay a few bones for. Especially if the yeah. DLC was included. Would you play a remaster of New Vegas? Of course I would play a remaster of New Vegas. <laughs> that might be the stupidest thing you've ever asked me. I don't me. know. I just just trying to spark conversation <laughs> that's all yeah sorry rick sorry yes plainly i would i would play a new vegas remaster i would play it right now in the, <laughs> show. the show go, go play, play it <laughs> um well the the dead money dlc was not without its heartbreak uh and it, anyway uh it, there were a couple cut weapons from the game it introduced some new ones um like the automatic rifle which was like a bar mm-hmm. um it hit hard but it had the worst spread of any automatic game or any automatic gun in the game there's a bunch of melee weapons as well those knives what were they called the cosmic knife yeah cosmic knife there was a cosmic knife clean and then the and then you could strap one to a spear yes and yeah that's right and have a spear stabby spear there was the hollow rifle I loved the hollow rifle. I forgot that that existed. Yep, there's a hollow rifle. There's a couple other melee type weapons, but I didn't go for that noise. One of the ga- one of the guns that they cut, there were two that they cut. One was melee, so I didn't care. But the one of the guns that they cut that I'm really upset about is the Faderator, which was a version of the Gauss rifle from that era. And boy, howdy do I love that Gauss rifle. So mm-hmm. it's it's it a so good. It looked the same, 
but the properties were considerably different. I'm checking out the the fandom wiki here. Uh, it says uh, he, it has the distinction these different distinctions from the standard Gauss rifle: lower ammunition usage per shot, larger ammo capacity, an automatic operation, very high hit chance in VATS, tons of knockback, and dramatically increased rate of fire, bringing the weapon's calculated damage per second to uh, twenty thousand one sixty. <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, it shoots a spread of three shots with one trigger pull. <laughs> so it's like a gauss shot. I see gun. why they cut it, yeah. <laughs> it fires 12 shots with three rounds per shot, bringing the total number of rounds fired to 36. Based on these factors as well, uh, the weapon only appearing, let's see, in one normally inaccessible test cell, it can be assumed that the Federator was never meant for legitimate inclusion in the add-ons like the debug 9mm and the disintegrator rifle. It's likely that the Federator web was a weapon designed to help developers and playtesters get through combat as quickly as possible, which is further backed up by the low skill and strength requirement for effective use. Right. Um, That's neat. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, you can you can bring it in um, using console commands if you want. Uh, let's see here. And then... Where was this other thing? Um, it has unlimited ammunition, and it will use ammunition in the inventory, max charge, bulk, etc., but the ammunition count will not go down due to the amount of massive ammunition regeneration from the microfusion breeder effect. The gun can be fired continuously without its ammunition reaching zero. Uh, if one has the fast shot trait, firing this weapon fully automatic may cause the game to run slowly until one stops firing it, so it also messes with time. <laughs> So, I really like, um, I really like that aspect of it. So yeah, I really kind of want to just boot the game up and drop this into my hands and just fire around with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we know Dead Money's scary. Uh, is there any other elements of Fallout like like moments that you thought were particularly terrifying? Uh, I don't, Rick. That's that's a big question. Like in in the whole Fallout series, there yes, there are a lot of scary moments. Um, is it Vault One Hundred and Six? That's the vault that makes you high, Ye and uh, and you see maybe things from the past that you turn see. into real. Um, that was that was especially terrifying, especially terrifying. Um, Let's not forget about Gary. You're just walking. Gary, around here. yes. Gary, Gary. <laughs> You're like ah. Stop. <laughs> Vault 108 is very scary. Uh, um, the Museum of Witchcraft in Fallout 4. That one didn't get me too much. Spooky. But it was good. Yeah, I, I was scared to death. I was I was terrified. Yeah. There there are a lot of scary moments in the Fallout series. You know what actually scared me the first time I stumbled upon it was that camp in 76 with like the screams. And the paintings that move. Yes! I didn't know the, the, the lore oh. behind it. So I walk in, I hear this, I'm screaming, and I'm like, what is, why do I, I hear all this? I'm still <laughs> mad at Archon. I was with him the first time that we found that, and he'd been there, and he knew all about it. And and um, and I was like, what was that? What was that? that sounded like a woman screaming. <laughs> I, I thought there weren't people in this game. Where Where is that coming from? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't hear anything. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. That was not fun. Um, there was something else that popped in my head when you were talking about Vault um, 106 when you would get high and then and kind of flip around. And I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, he says that he was just shouted out for spoiling things. And he was. I, I had just. That same day, earlier that day, I had gotten onto him a little bit about like, you know what, let me discover things because, oh. <laughs> because, you know, he's Archon, he has all the things and, and he just wants to give you all the things and show you the things. And I was like, well, you know, let, let me discover some things. <laughs> and he's like, all right, we'll take you. He's right to like, that place. well, let's discover a thing. <laughs> um, one of the, one of the biggest things that we've not talked about yet was Far Harbor. Far mm -hmm. Harbor definitely had some scary elements, you know. Yes. The fog crawlers through in the fog for the first time. Those things were awful. The gulpers, mm -hmm. I think, weren't the gulpers introduced in Yeah, gulpers, anglers. 
Oh, um, bog crawlers. Yeah. Those guys. I pretty scary. I always enjoyed this the uh, um, metro sections uh, in Fallout Three. That was scary to me as well. They were. They were eerie. And then in Fallout Three, you find this whole underground section full of vampires. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> blah. blah. <laughs> of course, you guys would be here. Uh, what was that place called? Um, uh, I I've it forgotten called. it. Arifu? Um, no, Arafu was the place. No, Arafu they... was the town. Yeah. It was the V. So that's the V. Uh, I can't I remember. remember. Vance, I think, is what you're thinking of. Vance the is the name. I think. Yeah. It's... Was the guy's name the leader? The uh, something street metro, I feel like, it's or been uh, so long. Ah, I can't remember the name of it. Moresti, Moresti Train, Train Yard. Yard. Thank you, Archin. Moresti um, Train Yard. Yeah, there. I. It's hard for me to pinpoint which fall. Now, I I definitely think Fallout Four was less scary by comparison to New Vegas and Three. Fallout Four has a bit of an actionier feel. Yeah, you know, it's it has. The combat, the difference in combat, and it, it definitely, you feel a little bit more capable in, in Fallout 4. I was just thinking about this for a second. Um, a lot of horror is derived on the lack of flexibility or control mm -hmm. from the character. Like, I remember, like, part of the freakiness of, like, Resident Evil 3 was, like, you have this giant creature, like any of the old Resident Evils, you have this giant creature gunning for you, and you're like, I gotta turn real slow to run away, mm -hmm. and then like, clop, 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 you run it like a, a leisurely ah! jog. <laughs> what? We're stupid, Rick. Uh, uh, Van Sylvan <laughs> mentions the Dunwich building. Yeah. The Dunwich stuff. We didn't even yeah. mention that, and that's all the spookiest yeah, stuff in that, all of these games. Point Lookout, too. Yes, all Point, Point Lookout. Lookout was terrifying. Point Lookout was spooky. Oh, because it had and, all the whew. creepy hillbillies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and there was the uh, that whole Dunwich storyline with the book, the uh, Krivbekna. The Krivbekna. Thank you. Yeah. We did yeah. a lot. We did a let's play of that. Boy, we did. Boy, howdy, we got hated for those. <laughs> yes, we did. I loved them I though. Did. I loved those let's play episodes. <laughs> I would still do them if I thought we could do it without getting crucified. Oh, we could now. But um but yeah, that's true. Uh but yeah, like I was just thinking about this. Like the more capable, like if you're solid snake going to a scary game, like <laughs> like zombies don't stand a chance, man. Mm -hmm. Or like uh Sam Fisher, you just like do the wall jump and then they can't get to you. <laughs> you're just mm -hmm. up there doing a split. Um but uh, but yeah, you're right. Fallout Four definitely took the scare factor away because you could do a lot more with. Yeah, with you, were you were more given. capable. You were more capable. Man, mm -hmm. some of those <laughs> thinking about those Fallout Three games. I know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go back and install Fallout Three, install New Vegas. I'm gonna start a new character and be like, woo! And then like an hour later, I'll be like, yeah, it's go play Fallout Seventy Six. Yeah. <laughs> It always it can happens be hard that to way. go back. It can be hard to go back. I reinstalled Ob Oblivion, and I don't even think I played it for like more than a half an hour. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, all right. Well, um, speaking of the uh, games that we've been playing, <laughs> so Shalene, what have you been doing in Fallout? I've been playing a ton of Fallout over the past couple of weeks. A ton of Fallout. And um, let's see. Um, I've taken uh, my low-level character through a bit more of, uh, of the storyline. Archon and I took our, our baby characters. And we are at the decision point now of whether we are going to side with the Raiders or the Settlers. So... Um, I think what we're going to do is is uh, my character will choose one and we'll play through that story and then his character will choose the other and that way we can play through both stories. So um, that was really neat. Um, I uh, Light spoilers, by the way. I really enjoyed <laughs> meeting the remnants of the army. That was very, very cool. Uh, yeah, yep. Yes, and I loved that uh, Private Lucky, the dog... <laughs> got a vote when they were making a decision i don't remember that yes they have a dog named private lucky did he just bark and 
yes they were they were like okay you know are we gonna help this vault dweller and and the the commander asked for votes and he's like private lucky and the dog is like arf <laughs> it's so cute i love that the dog got a vote and uh so how was your uh liberator pet my liberator pet i loved the liberator i loved him i was broken hearted that he exploded broken hearted <laughs> just utterly devastated that he exploded um but uh, they did say that they were going to fix him up and have him running around a foundation. I haven't seen that yet. I don't know if they actually do that, but I hope they do. I hope that it's it's uh, running around in there with the cat. I think that would be great. So um, it was really fun for the few minutes that I got to follow it around. I liked that a lot. So nice. it's really cute little liberator, some duct like tape that. on it, and they drew a little happy face on it. Rick, a <laughs> little they? happy face. Oh, it was just it was precious <laughs> little face. It was so cute. That's awesome. And uh, that whole underground section was astonishing yeah. with the the communist bunker. That was that was just astonishing, and I wonder how many how many of these type of places still exist, you know, in, in the fallout world, uh, because these people, they were all ghoulified. So they're not going to die of age. You know, they could, they could still be down there fighting the war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, but I, I really enjoyed going through the Wastelanders storyline. I feel like it's, it's pretty funny that I'm going to finish it just in time for Brotherhood of Steel. <laughs> um yeah you you needed to finish that in time for that. yeah but by the way we know that the the chinese were still uh interloping uh as far in the mm -hmm. future as fallout 3 and fallout 4 the submarine you're right well he wasn't he wasn't really a bad guy but but yeah you're well, right well he wasn't a bad guy but he was he was chinese yeah but so, uh, you're right um, they've been around for a while yeah he was part of the communist forces so let's see. Um, I've taken Jim Justice through Commander Daguerre's storyline uh, all the way through that. And that was a great storyline. The quests were very fetch questy, very, very fetch questy. But I did enjoy the little scenes and conversations um, in between missions. Mm -hmm. So I liked that. I found her incredibly annoying, incredibly annoying at other people's camps. Just, I hated her. But getting to know her myself as my own companion, I liked her a lot more. You know, she, she was a big nerd. She likes video games and comics. And uh, she was a much more likable person with that background. Uh, but they, I, I do wish they would maybe tweak her dialogue a bit after, after the closure of the quest so that she doesn't say that the same the same thing over and over and over again i get a little tired of her repeating dialogues but yeah um let's see what else we've done a lot of nuclear winter we've had some really good rounds of nuclear winter um are you going to talk about last night's or i don't even remember last night's okay so last night we were playing nuclear winter it was, it was brilliant it was so good we didn't even win the match, but it was oh. so fun. Oh, this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so right. <laughs> um, we were playing Nuclear Winter, and I had I had the missile launcher. And it's a scoped missile launcher. It's brilliant. Uh, we were at those cabins just below Ingram, mm -hmm. and we were moving from one to the next one. And the next one was full of people there were there was at, at least Everybody. one team inside it and there were some other teams closing in around it mm -hmm. and um i could see a player in power armor through the window so i just sent like six rockets through that window <laughs> <laughs> and killed one of those players and that team was one of the teams that is constantly killing us and i was so proud to have taken them down even though i did it you know in kind of a Kind of a sneaky way. I was still very proud to have done it. You sniped him with a rocket launcher. You and that yes. rocket launcher mean business. That's not the first time you've just... You ripped an entire team apart with a rocket launcher before. I love that rocket launcher. You just, you it's, just it's give Shaleen an RPG or a, or a pocket knife and a playground. One of the <laughs> <Right>? two. <laughs> that was so good. 
Uh, we did talk about that, didn't we? Oh, yeah, the playground? we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, you missed a really, really great round a couple of nights ago. Uh, Archon and I uh, were playing some nuclear winter. We dropped in at, at Tradition at the golf course, and uh, things were going okay. And uh, we had made it to, like, the top 10 or so, and there were we were kind of snugged up against a cliff and I saw a couple of guys and they were coming up. And so I shot them and uh, I, I killed two guys there and I was really excited about it. Cause you know, I, I don't, I don't get a ton of kills. I'm not excellent at, at nuclear winter, but I was very excited. I killed those guys with my Tesla rifle and then somebody on top of the cliff killed me. Uh, it was like dropped me instantly. Just, killed me and so there was uh, Archon and five other guys right and so he was hiding by the cliff and somebody came over to loot me and he killed him with the crossbow that guy never even knew who killed him like he just he just died and then somebody else came to loot his body and he killed him the same way <laughs> it was wonderful and he ended up winning that round wow. uh, just just working through them one by one uh, and he was having to switch from weapon to weapon because he would run out of bullets and he wouldn't have time to reload and he'd run out of bullets on this one and uh, so he kept switching weapons and it was so exciting to watch. I was just over there, like biting my nails, just like, oh gosh. And, uh, and uh, the last two guys were on a team and he downed one guy and then he kind of stepped back and the other player revived his friend. And I was like, oh, it's all over now. Like they're, they're going to get him, but they didn't, he killed them and won. Wow. It was cool. It was very exciting. That's awesome. So yeah, lots of nuclear. I love nuclear winter. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, lots of daily ops, lots of lots of homework. I'm getting really close to finishing the scoreboard. I think I'm at level 92, 93, nice, something nice. like that. I'm still pretty far away. So, yeah. I'm what have you been doing, Rick? Well, uh, daily ops as well. I've been playing with my new bloodied build. It's pretty much 99% done. Maybe some tweaky tweaks that I got to do. But I'm fairly resilient now. Like, you know, even with my health pretty low serendipity uh doge um some other you know my armor which gives me boosts at low uh, low health and a couple other things um damage resistance boosts at, at at low health too so yeah the bloodied build is working out really good the bloodied gatling gun um is just a monster of a gun that thing kills stuff real nicely um and then you gave me a bloodied uh, was it LMG? Two? Yeah, it wasn't two shot. It was just bloodied, I think. And um, it was bloodied explosive. I don't. Th it's not explosive. Yes, it's not explosive. Is it explosive? It's bloodied explosive. Yes. Either way, I love that gun. It is my favorite gun. I only use it when we go into daily ops because the ammo is so scarce because it just eats through it. Uh, but daily ops helps keep it replenished, and it just melts things. Um, and I feel the pain because when I'm fighting a big enemy who just likes to target me, I melt too. Um, so, you know, tit for tat, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, man, I love that gun, Chalene. That's right, because Hall our little Halloween event, um, we were all shooting fireworks off, and you were mm -hmm. like pinging the water with your fixer, and I was like, <laughs> just so all the uh -huh. water went up. Yeah, that's right. Um, we didn't talk about the Halloween event. No, did I was, was going to get there. Yeah, um, good. But real quick, uh, one of the things about the match last night in Nuclear Winter was we always start at Tradition, which Tradition is the golf course. Was it Rolling Greens? I think Bolton it's Greens. Bolton Greens, something. Um, I play the game, don't remember the names. But uh, it, that's our Tradition. We spawn in. And what happens is I usually loot the Greens for the most part. Archon kind of hits the outside of the house and Shaleen runs right inside. I pick the lock and at least I'm fairly certain that's how we all do it. And then we kind of meet I up. I get the computer and then I get the lock. Yeah. And then we all meet up inside the house. So um, I'm I'm inside the house. Archon's inside and so is Shaleen. And I, and I hear something outside. I'm like, I swear. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah. I was like, I swear. And I thought I heard somebody. And I stand there. And Archon and Shaleen are doing stuff. And I don't say anything. And I'm like, yeah, I don't hear anyone. I guess, I guess it was just something. Must have been the wind, as it were. <laughs> and... Uh, 
So like, all right, we're running around and we get ready. We're like, all right, let's go to the let's go to the farm. Cool. So Archon walks up to the door, like opens it up, and as he opens it up, there's another person standing there. It was just kind of like this. Hi. <laughs> and then just we were just staring just, at each other, yeah. just like <laughs> staring at each other. He shoots. They shoot. Everybody shoots. The bus blows up. Like it's just it's mayhem. Yeah, it um, was a team that was ready to breach the the building and yeah, they were take us down. Position and we just kind of ruined that with just opening the door. Um, and so he went down. The guy by the bus, uh, I killed the, the, that guy. Somebody downed him, and I finished him off. And I heal up, and we reload, and we're like, whoa, like, geez, like, that's crazy. You know, we're all just kind of like, whoo. And, and then out of nowhere, another dude in power armor attacks us, so I finish him off with a gauss shotgun. And we're like, all right. So, and then that's when we went to the farm. And then we went to the cabins, I think, after that, right? Yes. That was the interactions we had, and then we had to mm-hmm. fight the cabins. But it was just funny, because we just opened the door, and it's just like, Psh. Um, we didn't talk about our breach, did we? Our tactical breach? I don't remember if don't we did or not. I don't think we did talk about our tactical breach, but it was good. So, um, since playing Division with Shaleen, we've gotten a little bit of a tactical bond. And we were pushing up on the dam, and I was coming in through the first floor. Archon and the other dude were kind of running up into the second floor. So, I, I had a grenade. I said, Shaleen, pop the door on the first floor, and I'm going to whip a grenade in. You know, because that's how people do it, right? I think that's how people do it. I don't know. So she opens it up. I throw in a grenade. It goes off. And we clear the first room. And I go to the second room, which is the main kind of area. And there's a dude. Fire a couple shots. Downed him. And then fired a couple more. And he's dead. So I was like, well, he didn't go down. He didn't die right away. So there's more people. The next thing I know, I hear, bruh, 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 and then like Archon's dropped. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, what happened? We got ambushed outside. And then, bruh, 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 and then our other teammate drops. And I'm like, what is going on? It sounds like there's a... A platoon of soldiers outside. Mm-hmm. And um, Shaleen runs out, <laughs> drops. And I'm like, what just happened? I run out, fire a couple of rounds, and then <laughs> drop. And what I see up in the air is that one of the guys was cheating by spawn, like, building camps. Because you can, like, apparently blueprint your camp like normal. But what he was doing mm-hmm. is he was placing everything in the air. And he had also glitched he out. He was floating it. He was floating it and also glitched out that there he must have had, like, 25 30 turrets he was able he was had platforms with like a dozen turrets on it and he was putting like 10 of those in midair yeah so So if if you weren't you can't you can't blueprint turrets that's not part of the game that that was hacked yeah plus you can't really just put platforms in mid Mm -hmm. mid, in midair so it was a great breach and we it was flawless we took the building we're like yes and then all of a sudden just cheating took us out although they didn't win so Justice was served. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, how much do you have to suck to to be putting up like eight hundred turrets and still lose the game? <laughs> well, they like... weren't. Well, they weren't good. Like the guy actually got a drop on me in that main area, and I ducked back and I went, "Wait a second. I popped back out and dropped him, and I was like, "This dude should have had me harder yeah. than you know that." So I was like, "These guys are terrible." And even when if we were... you're cheating in such an extreme way. Like, and you still don't win? Yeah. Bad players. But, uh, but yeah, so there was that. Last weekend, yes, last weekend uh, on Saturday, we had our first community event, our Halloween mm-hmm. uh, event. And, man, there were a lot of people. Let's see here. There was Bitrash, Sora, Aleth, Moxie. Stone. Stone. My brain stopped working. Archon, you, me. <laughs> this is the easy ones. Uh, uh did i say sora already you did say sora there sora. were a couple of others there too um alex was there yeah there was a lot i the people kept running around and i kept like it even, was like, a lot of people even with, I, I showed my wife the um mm-hmm. the picture of all of us and i'm like that's now wait a minute that was uh oh um oh i can't remember she i know where she's from but her name is escaping me because i get was getting it confused with pantagruelia the whole time I'm so sorry, but there was one more person. I remember your name started with a P, and I cannot remember because I get I got them confused with Pentagon oh, earlier. Oh, um, yes, so. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> Pionic, Pionic, yeah, P- Pionic, Pionic, Pionic. Okay. She she told us how to pronounce it, and I still butchered it, and we um, still can't pronounce it. I think I got everyone. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I'm trying so hard to jog back that far with names I don't use very often, but. It was a lot of fun. It was a great night. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, it was just uh, the first thing that we did was uh, thanks to Jess because she, yeah, Arch and Aleth, I mentioned her. I think I actually pronounced her name right too. Um, but uh, then, uh, so yeah, we were looting, we were shooting off fireworks. Um, the first event we did was actually thanks to to Jess Star um, for this tip off was a Nuka Shine challenge. So. We all, it was chaos trying to get everybody trying to drink Nuka Shine at once. <laughs> it was and then hurting like, cats. Oh and I goodness. was, I was the worst cat. Yeah. Because like, we're all like, all right, let's get ready to drink. And like, Shilin's like, wait, we were supposed to do it yet. And we're like, yeah. She's like, well, I'm, I'm, I've blacked and I out and I've gone somewhere else. And we're like, all right, come back, come back. And, um, it was, it was pretty crazy. So we all got there and, um, we all drank the Nuka Shine and we disappeared into different locations. And I think Stone's game crashed. So he mm-hmm. just fast traveled back to my house and he was kind of like the moderator of like who got back first. Yeah, he was being the judge, the line and, um, judge. Yeah, I, I took a really bad turn because it just didn't work. I died. Um, Payanak was like being chased the entire way by uh, goals. I felt so things. bad for her because you made a, a rule that there was no combat, yeah, there was no that combat we couldn't allowed. fight. So you and heal, just but... everything was after her ghouls and mire lurks and <laughs> She just kept getting attacked. She kited everything back. Um, but I, I'm trying to think. It was Sora won. She got second because you and Archon were disqualified. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who got third. But It was uh, really fun, though. It was well, really fun. That's right. Sora won because his game didn't load in right, so all the obstacles were gone. <laughs> 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 so he just ran. <laughs> um, so that was fun. And then we did a costume contest, which Shalene judged. Mm-hmm. Um, Sora won the costume contest. Too. I didn't. You know, it was yeah. funny. I thought about that. I think the next day, and I was like, "Oh, I shouldn't have. I should have been like, if you got first, you couldn't. But there was only like seven people. So I mean, yeah, we gave <laughs> prizes care. to a lot of people anyway. It was, um, it was a good time. It yeah. was a good time. Uh, actually, Stone gave away some uh, um, drafted monster masks, mm-hmm. and like the next day, he's like, "I got another." <laughs> that was Sora. Sora gave away a bunch of stuff. Was it? Was that okay? Yeah, he um, had a bunch of extra stuff. And uh, so. so that was that was a lot of fun. And afterwards, we just kind of ran around. Um, people hung out for like from like seven to twelve in the morning my time. I mean, it was a long, mm-hmm. long night. And they were, you know, shout out to some of the other some of the people in there. Um, they were already up at four a.m. joining our yeah. our event. So they were up for for a long time. Um, so yeah, it was it was a heck of a lot of fun. Um, we will do a Christmas shindig. At some point, it will be a lot of fun to do that. I don't know how we're going to do it, but maybe we'll do like a secret say and that kind of thing and just all poop little bags out on the floor. And <laughs> who gave me, you know, spoiled food? But um, but yeah, so we'll do a Christmas one as well. So if you missed the Halloween one, stay tuned. We'll, we'll do a Christmas one in December. Followed by last night, we actually had our first like Thursday night community night where we just hang out for like an hour, hour and a half. And in that one, it was uh, Lee Benjamin and Alex. No, Moxie, Moxie. Um, was in that one. And um we just ran around for a while and I think you and Archon did a daily op with them. And yeah, we um, went through a daily op together. It was really nut, fun. Mama Dolce's. So yeah, we've been trying to get out there and meet the people, you know, kissing hands and shaking babies and whatnot. So <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, they do rattle anyhow. Um, so yeah, that was, that, that's kind of my gameplay. Just tonight I'll be hitting up some stuff with uh, you and Archon and then, I'll miss the entire double XP weekend because I'm busy. So, <laughs> so uh, oh, right. Rick yeah, has his right. character. You started this one with Wastelanders, right? As soon as Wastelanders dropped, I, I yeah, started this up. Yeah. You started it with Wastelanders. I have Jim Justice, who I started with the release of the video game. <laughs> <laughs> what, two years ago now? Yes. And Rick's character caught up to mine in level. Yeah. Uh, and, and he was giving me a bit of a hard time about it. Uh, so... I decided to to be a little bit competitive about that, so I'm trying to to out level him now. Now that we're neck and neck, so yeah, I'm trying to keep up. And... <laughs> <laughs> little uh, little chat room joke, you guys listening to the audio can't see. So visual gags work well with podcasts. Anyway. Um, yeah, what are we at? Like level 191? Both of us are at 191 now? I think so, yes. You might be at 192, so I gotta I gotta keep up. I'm gonna try to play as much as I can throughout the weekend just to keep in there. 
Yeah, I'm going to be on like 24 7. Just, no, you just won't. leveling, just grinding could... away at levels. You were supposed to be there like last weekend. And instead, you're like, I played Animal Crossing for three hour, 30 hours in one day. No, no. I just, you know. Things Animal happen. Crossing for 30 hours in one day. It is the Halloween event this weekend. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's our gameplay. We do have an email. Uh, Shalene, if you would be so I'd kind. I'd love to. Okay, this one comes from Tibor. Oh, nice. Um, AKA RTZ13. And he says, Hi, vendor, spender, and fender. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, who's spender? Because I thought I that was going to be me. I think that's got to be me because I feel like fender is a guitar reference. That's true, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, vendor, spender, and fender. Long time without an email, so here we go. From the occasional hiatus, I came back again to Fallout 76, and this new balancing update is really working great, especially if you have a lower-level character under 50. It really helps to bridge the gap between different level players and friends. If it makes it one of the most important patches so far. Although I still mainly play solo, joining these new daily ops makes me feel a lot more useful than ever. I have to admit, in the last episode, I really liked the new segment where Vendor explains why he's not playing the game anymore. And I think it is time to help him get back into it and get more involved again to cheer him up. Maybe a challenge to post pictures about why it's worth coming back? Maybe with Microsoft Bethesda purchase, he'll be able to fly in flight sim to West Virginia with the Pridwin. I love that. I think that should be a thing. As Fallout 76 is a constantly changing experience for us, I can really understand why they decided to use the card system instead of permanently picking perks so evolve together with the game rather than restarting it at every update with a new character. Listening back to the old TFS episodes would be fun now, making them a more outdated slash historic experience. I don't know about historic, uh, but yeah, outdated. I don't know how well they'll hold sure. up. <laughs> As always, really looking forward to what's the next true Fallout game will be like. I'd be happy to get back to a bit darker tone and seriousness, although looking at the grimness of the news this year, it makes me realize that the mood of Wasteland 3 is something more like what we could expect from an IRL apocalypse. As always, it took a lot of rows to say nothing. Looking forward to the next episode. Love ya, Tabor. P.S. Can we get Archon on the show? It would be great. <laughs> yeah, th thank you for the email. I don't think we're going to have any luck with getting Bender back in the game as much as we would like to. There have been multiple attempts. Mm -hmm. I would like to see him get back into it, but there have been multiple attempts. So we're going to need either like some sort of draw or like a big old guilt trip or something. What do you think it would take, Shaleen? I don't know. I think I think he's a very busy guy right now, yeah. and I think it's probably not the best time to apply pressure. Oh, I I was joking about that. Yeah. I'm not going to peer pressure me into playing Fallout 76. <laughs> no, I would like to. I would like to see him come come back. He's again. going through a lot right now. Yeah. But so and plus, like a game about a pandemic might not be the best thing to play while actually like dealing with an actual pandemic. Yeah, yeah that's so a little too like life. But... Um, but yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we'll see the return of Vendor in the Wasteland at some point. I'm sure with the yeah, new Yeah, I miss playing game, with him. But, um, until then, he will be flying all around the world in Flight Sim and trying to figure out who done it in Among Us. Because he's mm -hmm. been playing that a good bit, too, I think. So anyway. Yes. All right. Any announcements for this Sunday? I will not be around, so there will be no Survival Horror Sunday. Sorry for the media. Uh. I know. My, my mom is going to be devastated. Yeah, well, if I don't go see my mother, she'll be devastated. And I live closer to her than your mother. And so, well. Yes, but, but my mother's more important, so. Not disagreeing. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so after that, uh, check out our last episode of Game Stack, which was Dame Stack. That was a doozy. It was a lot of fun. Um, next Friday will be Game Stack here. Same that. Mm -hmm. I'm same bat channel. Uh, and then Extra Life. I'll be doing Extra Life 24 because I'm crazy and psychotic and stupid on the 7th, which is a Saturday. I'll start at 10 in the morning and stream from 10 in the morning on Saturday to 10 in the morning on Sunday. Please come back here that weekend and help us raise some money for Children's Miracle Network, specifically Johns Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore City, Maryland, was is where we will be donating to. Um, so please come help out. Throw a couple pennies 
uh, towards the kids. Um, not at the kids because they're sick enough as it is, but like just put them in a, like a bucket and hand it to them or something. Um, because they really need it. And also, if we hit our goal of three thousand dollars, I have a Pekin one chip challenge chip that I will do uh, on a, a nuclear winter stream. I decided not to do it that day because by the time we hit three grand, if we did on that stream, Shleen, it would be like early in the morning the next day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would be so compromised from being up for twenty hours. I'm not gonna pop a ghost. Or I'm not going to pop a Carolina Reaper chip because that would be a die. So, yeah, next next Saturday, please come by for that. I really hope you'll be there for our, um, you know, for our Extra Life stream. I think Shaleen will be dropping in and out here and there. Um, yeah, I'll be there as I can. I do have to work that day, but I'll be there as I can. Uh, and then uh, I'll put out a schedule of what I'll be streaming. I might change things up a little bit. We were jumping around a lot last time. Mm -hmm. I might just stick with, like, one or three games just to kind of... You know, whatever. Um, or if you guys have any requests or any suggestions of something I should try, like a new game or something, um, you know, that'll be fun, too. All right. Anything else that I'm missing, Shalene? Nope. OK, cool. You can tweet at the show at that Fallout show at the network at We Just Love Games at me at Rick McVick and also at Shalene at Shalene L and Vendertron at Vendertron N. You can find us also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash that Fallout show and slash groups slash that Fallout show. As well as Facebook.com slash We Just Love Games slash groups slash We Just Love Games if you're into those as well. You can email us like Tibo did tonight at info at We Just Love Games dot com. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. YouTube.com slash We Just Love Games. That's our video repository after they get done here on Twitch. So if you missed our past Survival Horror Sunday streams and they're not up on Twitch, they will be up on the YouTube as well. You can find our show on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Uh, leave us a, a text review on iTunes with five stars, and we'll shout you out at the beginning of the show. And also read the the comment. Uh, we record live every other Friday here at twitch.tv slash we just love games at 630 Mountain, 830 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our other show, Game Stack, records on the other Fridays. Not every, not this Friday, but see every other Friday. See how we do it? It's like, anyway. Um, and we also do other streams like Survival Horror Sunday when we can. Thank you so much for listening. And Shaleen, what is the last word? Don't forget the buddy system. Wait, I almost did the wrong thing. There we go.